Welcome, welcome, welcome guys. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be taking you through the build. We're actually gonna build it together. I think I'm gonna start this series of streams as we build our projects together. I wanna show you if you guys have any questions, let me know in the chat or in the comments and I will be answering them as we go. Today, we are building the second version of this RC airliner. If you haven't seen the first one, I recommend you to go check out in the channel. Uh, it turned out a bit of a little mishap and we kind of crashed. Um, there was a lot of things that were wrong with that plane. Uh, starting off with, uh, it was a lot tail heavy. And if you see on the video, it just took off and it, it just stalled straight up. And there was no recovery from there. It just didn't have enough authority to try to overcome how tail heavy it was. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we're going to take care of in this build to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. Um, I do not have all the parts printed yet, but we're going to start off with all of these first. Uh, the first thing we got to do is start cleaning all the edges and rough stuff from the prints. Um, these are our, let me get it there. These are our horizontal stabilizers. Uh, we are going to be putting these in as well as our ailerons and everything else, hopefully in this one video. But this will be a series of videos, guys. Uh, this is more of a concept that I'm trying out. It's going to be more of like we just get to chill and talk about RC builds and stuff, whatever you guys have in mind um, as we build along. Uh, there will be parts where I will be silent, um, but it's fine. It's all good. Uh, you just ask questions if you have any. If not, it's all good. You're just here for the build. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now my printer did leave some pieces in here. Um, so this step is more of like getting everything together. Now the build itself, it actually doesn't take too long. Um, it's more of the time waiting for glue to dry and putting all the little extra details. Um, that's pretty much it like the the build itself is pretty straightforward uh, you could use an accelerator for the glue and then make the whole process probably in one day uh, and then get all the details in later um, but I do like to take the time and we're gonna put this to, to little sections and pieces as we go along and we're gonna take our time with all the details to make it look that much better First thing is getting rid of this brim. Um, you necessarily, you do not, it's not necessary to actually print it with brim. All the small wings and everything that's just, doesn't have too much surface area to stick on the printing bed. Um, I do like to print it with a brim just in case uh, because these, believe it or not, printing both of these is like over 10 hours. So it's like, you don't want it to be all the way at the end and just tip in a little bit and both of them fall and then you got to start over again. Uh, so you might as well just put a little brim on it and keep going. With this entire build, it's you got to take, it takes a lot of patience. Um, and the more patience that you have is better because you will get things done much, much nicer. It's all going to end up looking much nicer uh, and it's worth it. The more absolutely the more the more time you put in it the more effort it shows um so that's something that i do recommend if you are trying to pursue this um hey kevin how are you uh, if you're trying to pursue this build definitely 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 recommend to take some time on it um all right so these are the horizontal stabilizers now the original plans um they call for all, all the control surfaces for you to actually, here, let me show you aileron. All the control surfaces, they call for you printing a little TPU, little slit, and actually using it as your hinges, but I'm not too fond of that. Um, what I'm actually gonna end up doing is, let me see if I have those around here. I was actually cutting this hole a bit bigger we're gonna slice it through here and actually fit in a hinge. Um, it's actually an actual uh, hinge, which is gonna help out 
a lot better than just these little TPU parts. Hey, Kevin, if you have not seen um, the first video, I do definitely recommend you go and check it out. It's on my channel. Um, the first version ended up catastrophically uh, amazing, I want to say, because it was a nice crash. Um, and I just put so much love into it. And as soon as that happened, I was like, I'm already going, like I decided I'm still going to go for the version 2. And I decided to make it the A3, the A321. Uh, I'm going to make it a Spirit, as you can tell by the color. Um, if you check it out, the Spirit airliners, they're all yellow, except for the wings and the uh, horizontal stabilizers. Uh, but the rudder is all yellow, the tail is all yellow. Um, and yeah. So, um, the first thing that we got to do is make sure all of our pieces are nice and without brims, like this one. Um, I usually try to get this brim out in one piece, but sometimes it doesn't. So what we do is we will slice it just a little bit from the corners. Like I was saying, the more, the more effort you put onto these, the better they turn out. Um, the, the quality of the work is just a lot better if you're not rushing it, taking your time on it. There you go. Now on this build, I am contemplating in actually putting, um, I'm actually putting um, uh, lights on it. Um, I have a light kit. Let me see, I have it back here. I like it that I ended up putting on the on the old one. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out on my channel. Um, I the only problem is that this plan was not made to have lights integrated. So I am testing it out and like I made an actual hole on the front here. Um, it actually turned out very nice. And I'm trying to figure out where in the wings I'm going to put the lights because I would love for them to be on the front on the profile. Uh, because that way it's how the real ones are. I will not get it all the way to the tip, to the tip of the wing because this is not made and designed for that. There's not enough space. Um, so I think I am gonna incorporate them at least somewhere along the edge. Um, where did I get the motors and stuff for the? Uh, the motors are actually over here. So I got the motors off of Amazon. These were the motors that were on my version one. Uh, unfortunately, they did suffer damage. Uh, let me show you guys that. As you can see, they're very dirty. Um, they suffer some damage and I do believe they're unbalanced now. Uh, so I do not want to risk it as in putting these on this plane. And that's why I decided to get newer ones. Uh, these are 70 millimeter, uh, 70 millimeter EDFs. Uh, you can get them from Amazon or Banggood. Um, and these should be very, these are more, more than enough guys. Uh, when my original one flew, um, as soon as I turned it on, I realized that this is way more than enough than what it needs. Uh, but here they are. This is gonna be perfect for the build. Get that out of the way. Nice. This is like also an unboxing video, guys. Um, these are very, very nice, very stable, and they work perfect for this application. Uh, so yeah, I got these from Amazon. Um, I'll probably put the link down below. Um, they're perfectly balanced. Never had a problem with them. I mean, they only flew once, but they flew great. And mainly, they only flew once because. The previous version was tail heavy, not because of any fault of any of the equipment. All right, let's keep getting this little brim out of the way. Now, this build does take over 200 hours of printing. Um, I'm not kidding about that. It really does take time. Um, this build is actually by the design and the plans. Um, they're made by another YouTuber here. His name is Troy McMillan. Um, I'm trying. There are other plans though. Um, I the first one that I found was Troy's, and I said, "Hey, I'm just gonna build it because I really, I really want to try it." Um, 
but there are other plans that do include um, by other people that do include uh, retracts and stuff like that. But I said, hey, I'm gonna build it, see if it flies. If it does fly, then maybe try to upgrade it. I actually wrote to Troy, uh, trying to find if he can send over the CAD files so I can actually add retracts and other stuff, more details, uh, but he didn't get back. So for now, we're just gonna build it like this. As you can see on the bottom, there is no retracts. Really, it will hold on here with this goes right over here and that is our landing gear pretty much static landing gear all right so these are our there we go vertical stabilizer second parts of the vertical stabilizer there we go i do first like to make sure everything's straight and everything fits nice and perfect first there we go maybe I can trim this down a little bit more like I said guys the more effort that you put into these builds the better they end up looking and it's just time it's definitely just time all right we're gonna start gluing these together to get started are you gonna stand by yourself no all right i think i'm actually gonna end up needing more space because i need to lay these down so let me actually leave this here oh my first build i had an entire area i just had pieces everywhere because they do take up space once you start building it again this is a nine foot a fuselage and a six foot wingspan uh, so it's pretty big and it all comes together at the end when you don't have enough space to put it all together um, so yeah let's get to gluing guys I do use CA glue for all of this there's a lot of glues that you can use um, this is the one that I use and it was just straight from Amazon it is a star bond now there's a lot of people that have their opinions about this and what I can tell you is from my previous build that took a very, very hard hit, uh, it never broke in any of the seams from the glue. And I was not even the fuselage, which is very thin, very thin. And even the wings is very, like all this is very, this is where the engine was mounted and nowhere, nowhere where there was glue, it broke. And that was a very hard hit. So just from that test makes me say, hey, this is definitely enough for the glue. This is perfect. There's no need to go try to find some specific uh, uh, 3D uh, printing glue because there are specific 3D printing glues out there, uh, but there really is no need for it. Now I am, I know I'm gonna make a mess because this build is Kind of messy because it relies a lot on glue, but it's going to be worth it. All right, first piece, guys. If you are building this, make sure, make sure you do take your time for everything. Do not make a mess in your work area because CA glue will stain everything. All right. What printer should you use to print the parts? Um, I have two printers. You can actually print this with the smallest of Ender 3. Um, I actually used a, a CR10 version 3, I think it is. Uh, I also have Vox Lab Aquila uh, version 2. Um, and that the version 2 was the Aquila was the one that I used to print the version 1 plane. Um, but this one, this entire plane actually, since my Aquila was printing something else, um, this was all printed with a CR10. Uh, there is only one part for this plan that if you have an Ender 3, you have to split it in two parts, uh, but everything else pretty much fits. Like this is the entire build surface area and they will fit on the Ender 3s. All right, let's get this on here. Again, guys, welcome. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you do. I love to make these projects and I have a lot, a lot more uh, projects coming up and ideas. So make sure you subscribe. 
especially if you like this build to make sure you don't miss the flight video all right second part let's go now we'll be gluing all of the small parts first uh, making sure that everything fits nice um, I do recommend there is a vid build video you guys can watch it if you're building this and you can follow it along I just recommend to do all the small parts first and then go watch the build video and see what parts you like to build next because I for example I like to build all the small ones first and then put it all together not just not by just one by one how it goes let me see. Yeah, it's perfect. All right. Let's start with the wings. If you guys enjoy this, please let me know in the comments. I'm trying to see this. I'm trying to make a little build series of build with me and take you guys along the journey of building all the projects. If that's something that interests you, let me know, please. I'm testing this mode out. There we go. Now, I unfortunately do not have accelerator. Um, I'm not too fond of accelerator either, though. I've heard of mixed reviews, especially when working with uh, PLA. Uh, some people do like to use CA glue accelerators. Some people don't because when you use it, um, it actually does heat up a little bit. And sometimes it might warp your parts. So I just decided to let it be, let it do it, its thing little by little. It still gets a little bit hot. The CA glue still gets hot. It reacts, but it just does it slower. So it doesn't melt away the parts pretty much. Oh, I do want to mention to everybody who on Reddit, I had posted a, a picture of the, the version one plane, the Lufthansa one. And everybody was complaining and well, and stating, hey, make sure that your landing gear, um, you add something to it because it's not gonna be strong enough. And here is a part of the landing gear from version one and absolutely nothing happened to it. And it was a horrific and very hard crash and nothing happened to it. I was very surprised. So I know for a fact that the way this landing gear is made, it is perfect, it doesn't need anything else and is good to go. All right, this seems good. Let's make sure this is good too. Yes. Yeah, now the build again does take about 200 hours of printing. If you are thinking of printing it, um, make sure you got patience, man. And don't rush it. Make sure you follow all the instructions because it is very important how every piece is oriented and every piece turns out right. There we go. Actually, not even half of one. That's one third of the wing, guys. This would be still another piece at the end. Um, each wing is about three feet long. Again, it is a six foot wingspan from side to side. Let's get this to drying. I already got glue, CA glue on myself. Not nice. Now these pieces, um, these are probably, yeah, these are the biggest pieces pretty much of the entire build. Uh, these are the first parts of the wings. Uh, they do take, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 18 hours just for these pieces. Uh, they are the pretty much the most complex parts, everything else except for the middle of the fuselage that has these sections. Uh, everything else is straightforward. Like there really isn't much to it. Um, today we're also going to cut all the pieces out that we need, that is required. 
Uh, we're going to insert some inserts in here for the screws. I'm actually going to put this back away right now. And oh yeah, I do use 80 amp ESCs uh, for the build. This is the rudder. Let's get this together. This big guy is the tail. Yeah, it's, this tail is huge. There we go. Now, it would have been awesome if it had a little light hole right here. That would have been crazy. But it does not. So we're going to keep going. If you guys got any questions about RC, about anything of the builds, absolutely anything, planes, cars, let me know. We're here to have a conversation. Getting glue everywhere. And what I do like about this being yellow is that CA glue tends, when it dries, it tends to leave like a little haze. Um, and it, for example, I know in the gray ones, it will leave me a little bit of, of, of a white kind of haze to it. Um, so I'm glad that this yellow is not going to show that because it's going to look awesome. This part is a little bit tricky because this part doesn't have anything that fits one with the other so as I put it it's just I'm gonna have to hold it and let it be on the paper as it dries because it's not gonna want to stay together now this part yeah I do wish I had an activator but I don't all right Make sure it's straight. Give it a little push. There you go. Usually whenever you do parts like this, it actually wants to stay. Um, just don't push it. Just don't push your luck. Make sure you do try to dry it as much as you can before touching it, moving it. There we go. Now for the fuselage. We can get started with the nose. All right, so this whole entire build is made so it actually takes up a little rod. There's going to be a little rod that's going to go into tiny little holes. Um, these are carbon fiber rods. Uh, but the thing is, the rods are not there to actually uh, glue. They're actually there to uh, guide, pretty much. Um, now the question is, yeah, these holes are not going to work. Sometimes you do need a little bit of persuasion to make the holes a tiny little bit bigger. Again, those rods are not for structure. They're not for stabilization. They are literally just there to guide the pieces so they fall into the right place. So it's okay. It's okay if they don't fit in right. All right, which part do I need to split if you're printing on Ender 3D Pro? Um, there, you actually don't need to split it. it on this again, this more this the whole entire design is by uh, Troy McMillan. He provides the actual both if you're not going to split it and if you're going to split it um, and I believe it is this section I believe that it's these these guys right here would hold the the EDFs on the front and they're actually just too long so he actually has two the they're already split the files are already there uh, so you won't have to do anything pretty much you just get the files and print the one that fits for you so it's not a hassle at all all right, let's try to get these guys in here. Now, since these guys are just for guidance, um, they don't need to be too long, like the parts that actually go 
into the other part don't need to be long at all what I am gonna do though is I'm gonna do this backwards I'm actually gonna fit this guy let me see ah, that'll be fine You want to try to use the bar, the rod inside of a piece that has the most give so you can actually fit it in easier. Because it's actually hard when you have the glue to try to get both in at this correct in the same time. All right, test fitting first. And let's get this glued. Something that's very important and not many people mention this is if you have a depending on your slicer, um, you need to watch out. There's a setting. Uh, there is a setting that is called if it's going to include or exclude or the middle of where is it going to slice. And what that means is where the bead that is printing is going to end if it wants to include the outside or the inside as your measurement, um, your measurement for your, your piece. Uh, so make sure when you print all these, especially when you're printing parts that are going to fit one into each other, you want to exclude them from your count. So that way it prints it more into the inside. Um, and that's a setting that I don't know why many, well, especially if you use the Persa slicers, you. I, I think it automatically excludes it so people don't mention it but if you use cura you need to make sure that you set it right or else your pieces won't match um my version one there were some pieces that i for, totally for spaced out and forgot about that um, and i forgot to do that and some of them I actually had to use more of the drill to actually make them fit and it just wasn't nice i also i have a, a the files for a, a, a jeep uh, for an RC Jeep that's 3D printed um, and I had a lot of trouble like it actually um, I started building it and it actually um, took the fun away because it just wasn't fitting right and then I realized way later months later that it was what happened was that I did not have that setting on and it's very sad because I really like wanted to build that Jeep so I think I'm gonna build it later um, but make sure you you click on that all right there's our nose guys now it looks like an airliner. Um, I already have, now the original plans calls for a smaller motor, for a smaller servo for the steering. Um, I did, um, yo, the Mitris, how are you? Yes, you found my other channel, how are you, man? Um, welcome to my builds channel. Uh, so my other, the other plan actually calls for a way smaller motor, is a nine gram. Um, but since there was so much weight on the front, that was one of the reasons why the first build actually crashed uh, because I, I, it wouldn't even turn. Uh, when, I, when you're not rolling, it wouldn't turn. So I was like, hey, I'm going to move the, the weight more to the back just to make sure that I can turn. But that was a catastrophic mistake and ended up being tail heavy. So now I put an actual 20 kilogram motor uh, servo and I'm, I kind of had to cut and make a little custom. This piece, I made it custom. Like I just took this part off so it fits. Um, and hopefully it will be okay. It fits perfectly now. And it has a lot of power to actually turn with all the weight that we're gonna put on the front. Um, so let's get this guy actually fitted. Uh, we're gonna first glue this guy to here. Actually, you know, we're going to fit this guy first to here. Now, I do want to mention there is a part, which is part of fuselage number three, that you want to make sure is oriented correctly. Um, so long ways is to the top and bottom. Um, let me see. Nice, man. Nice, nice. Very nice. Um, it might finally work good. Uh, let me see. All right, I need to drill this guy. All right, so this plane, these plants actually sometimes it will like, here, let me show you guys. Uh, it will cover up the holes. There should be holes here. Uh, just make sure you grab a drill and 
pre-drill those. Just little by little, you're gonna feel it give and then go back. Very softly, no pressure needed. It's just that when it prints on the bed, it, it kind of mushes it a little bit and then it doesn't, it's not big enough for the actual carbon rod. And I do wish that this plane actually had carbon rods going through the entire plane because it's going to help it align more. But then again, those will be very expensive carbon rods because they'll be way too long for what this is needed. All right. So this guy goes like this. Yeah, I'll put the motor after. I need the carbon rods. Now guys, if if you guys like these builds, again, let me know in the comments. Um, I really dig these. Like, I really like the builds. I like the whole process of building them. Um, so I think I'm going to keep doing these guys while I build them. There we go. I like to answer the questions too, as in like, when the other plane, when the version one, I did the version one, um, I had got a lot of questions. You guys were very, very into the build. And that's why I decided to do this one. I was like, hey, if uh, you guys got questions, I'm here to answer them. No problem answering them. All right, let's get do this. Like I said, you need a lot of patience. And a steady hand, actually. Yeah, one of the things I do not like about CA glue, it gets everywhere. Thankfully, it does not, uh, let me see. Now, nah, man, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of actually crashing them um, because it is, they're fun. And you learn. Every time that you crash, you learn about them. And you learn what you did wrong, how you could have done it better, and you just get better and better. And if you want to start training on them, um, I recommend... For example, I got um, the Aero Scout. Hold on, guys. I got an Aero Scout, which is a very trainer friendly RC plane. There we go. Nice. There we go. I got an Aero Scout, um, which is actually a very large size plane, um, but it's perfect. It's a perfect platform to start getting into this hobby. Um, you, It's made out of foam. It's very, very durable. And it has a trainer mode as well as regular modes. And it just, it is so nice to learn on. That was actually my first plane. And you end up losing that fear of, hey, um, I'm gonna freaking crash them and then they're gonna break and you're like, no, nah, like it's fine. If you crash them, they'll last. It's actually hanging somewhere back there. Um, and they're perfectly fine. They're made to do that um, and they will last you. How many hours do I think this will take? Oh, this is actually gonna take a couple of days uh, because there's a lot of pieces that we gotta wait for. is isn't like we gotta glue them today and then we gotta wait for them for another day. Um, so I, I am thinking of making this into a series and then we'll see how it goes because I'll enjoy this. It's fun and I got no problem to do this. All right, we're going to start taking these pieces out. Um, this is actually the holes for the cables, for the wings, for the motors and the servos. Um, this is actually a very big gap because the ESC is supposed to fit in here, uh, but my ESCs do not. But I still need a lot of space because we need to pass the three cables for the motors, uh, the servo cables, and also the lights that we're going to incorporate. 
So to do this, we need to cut this nice hole out here. I'm going to start our soldering machine, actually. In work hours, uh, yeah, it's going to take a while, man. Um, it's 200 hours of printing uh, just for all the parts. And then it's going to take at least... I actually I think if you add them together it's not it's not gonna be much because there's a lot of waiting like I could easily build this in a day if the glue would just heat up like just automatically stick and would be done um, I'm also gonna put a lot of details I'm gonna print out decals and put a lot of details that do take more time um, so it's probably like a 10 hours or so it's not that bad all right this guy we need to actually drill these holes So this guy that goes here, yeah, let's drill these holes to get this out of the way first. Now when you are drilling these holes, make sure that it is straight. I think this one only has three. This guy, no, actually, that's all four. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. And when I get my pilot's license, I'll take it for a ride. Absolutely, man. Um, I've been studying. Um, more than halfway done with uh, ground school um, and then I'm gonna start my actual flight training I decided usually you do them together uh, but I said hey let me just get the ground school out of the way and then we can get more done and faster in the hours all right so to do this guys you just get your soldering iron and then I put about 300 degrees to not melt too much but actually melt it and not be burning um, and that's what I do. Here, let's get this guy here. All right. So we just need to open up this hole right here. And I remember the first version. Um, by the way, Demetrius, if you haven't seen the version one, it's on my channel. Uh, you can go check it out. It crashed spectacularly. Um, and that's why we're building version two. Yeah, I remember you're from Finland, man. Um, I know that there in Finland, um, to get the, actually in the entire Europe, to get your pilot's license is almost impossible, I've heard. Um, it's just crazy expensive, and there's a lot of regulations that make you jump through. Right. But I also heard that you can get I may be mistaken, but that you can use, if you're already a pilot, especially working with a company, you can fly over there without a problem. All right. There we go. You gotta have very steady hands because this hot iron will just go right through everything, especially PLA. And I do recommend to use a hot iron like this because it's gonna actually, it's gonna like cure where you're cutting as you're cutting. Um, if you try to do this by actually cutting the plastic, you are most likely going to um, break it because it's very brittle and it likes to break. Like it will just crack. Um, so I definitely, definitely recommend using the iron. Do not try to just cut it out. Um, I definitely, definitely recommend the iron. It's a lot easier and better. Uh, I did have another piece that I had to do that for, but can't find it so we're gonna keep going yeah if you got no connections it's hard to get it over there but hey 
Let's see. All right, this piece goes here. This piece goes here. Easy. Now let's get them to align. All right, let's cut these little guide rods. Actually, I'll do it backwards. I'm gonna do it on this one. Yeah, because this guy's a little hard to get in here. So the meters, I'm actually gonna start um, streaming on my other channel pretty soon as well. I'm gonna get back to flying. There we go. Now something pretty cool, the meters that you might not know is that there's a lot of academies that use Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator, as an actual simulator, and they even on the ground school that I'm taking, they recommend you play it. Um, because it's very, very well made. Do you get paid for the ads? Um, on this channel, I do not get paid for the ads. Uh, not yet. On my other channel, um, I also do not get paid for the ads. Um, but I do have a woodworking channel where I do get paid for the ads. Because uh, I monetize that channel. Hopefully I can monetize this one pretty soon because I really enjoy doing this and I would love to be able to fund all my projects from ads. That would be great because it would literally be endless projects. Oh, I'm getting some glue on myself. And that would be absolutely awesome to fund all my projects from ads because that way we can definitely, definitely do bigger stuff. And that's the idea. Oof, these fumes, guys. All right, let's try this out. There we go. Very light movements to make it fit. Like a glove, guys. So again, guys, this is a nine foot long fuselage. Um, and it is pretty huge. So you're watching the crash video? Yeah, man. <sighs> it's, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. I really enjoyed building that plane. Um, that one actually took me a longer time because it was the first time that I decided to build that plane. And I was like, hey, let's just go for it. I had no idea if I was going to be able to make it or not. Um, and it turned out very well. I made my mistakes, which I've learned, and now I'm not making those mistakes on this one. Uh, and that's going to help make this one a lot better than that first one. All right, next. All right, so there's these things right here that I need to cut out. Um, we're going to try that. This should be fun. Definitely, that's a mistake I made on the older one. Um, I did not do that until I was already... I, I built the entire tail, and then I realized that I had to cut those out, and that was a pain. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the old one... Actually, I have it here. Hold on. Pretty much this is all that was left um, from the old one. Literally, this is all that was left in one piece. Um, yeah, I think it, I it can work with this with some uh, with some flex seal. The funny part was that somebody I posted a picture on Reddit of that plane, and somebody was like, "Oh, you should uh, cut the tail and then put it." like at an angle to a wall when you're done with it. And I was like, yeah, that might actually turn out pretty nice. And then the tail is what survived. So I'm gonna grab it and stick it to the wall. So it looks like it's just, like the plane just went right through the wall and it just got stuck there. All right. 
<laughs> or you're playing as you're watching this. Nice. All right, so we need to cut this. This little two sections out, out of here. Uh, this is not easy. Last time I tried it, did not turn out perfect, but I also did not have enough space. So we're gonna try this again. And the reason why we gotta cut this is because on the original plans, they did not add these pieces without it to be able to actually pass all the cables for the servos through for the uh, elevator. No, it's actually, it was the Lufthansa logo. Well, this one's actually gonna be Spirit. The Lufthansa one actually looked very well. I, I modeled it right after it. An actual Lufthansa model of an actual plane. Even the tail number on the plane was real. So if you look up the tail number on that plane, you're gonna be able to see um, the actual pictures of that plane in real life with the same details. come out there we go see I need to take out this whole entire section of plastic so the cables will fit through there because let me show you actually I cannot show you because they're drying but through here has to pass the cables for the servos for the elevator and I guess that should work we'll see later if it's enough or not and here comes the cable for the rudder. Let me get this out of the way. Honestly, this plan is very easy to build. These are literally the only modifications you gotta do to them. Let's get this out. go all right I think I'm done with the soldering iron put this away make sure I'm not melting anything else all right so the tail section the tail section is composed of these two parts like this but I can't put them together until oh wow this one worked just a little bit I guess Oh man, this one did work right here, guys. Look at that gap. That's fine. And we're going to end up making sure we cover that gap later. Or we can print another tail out. Probably the answer. Right, this is section three. Yeah, I guess I can put these two guys together. All right, this is the tail section where it starts. This one goes through here like that. Yep. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, this is six. Perfect. Now, I do need to make sure that they follow the right order. bring this guy back because all the parts have they have a seal pretty much just like a seal like a brim um, on one side and on one side they don't 
And you need to make sure you're following that or else you're going to build the entire plane backwards. That's not good because the lines are, they're not going to line up. Let's make sure we drill these holes. Yeah, I'm going to drill them for all of them since I'm already here. Working with PLA plastic, guys, always, always do everything slower, less pressure than you regularly would. It's very brittle, it wants to give away, but it also wants to break. going to be spirit <laughs> that's why it's all yellow um, the newer spirit planes are literally all yellow they're gray uh, wings and just big bold letters same spirit I thought it was good contrast especially for RC planes um, the better the contrast the pretty much the better they'll fly because the better you, you're gonna be able to see with them and see them so that's why I decided to make Spirit. All right, let's see. Uh, this is the front, this is the back. So the front has those parts that way, correct? Ah, this is interesting. So this guy is to the back. The question is, which way is this one? Number six should go like this. Correct. No, like this. Number six goes like this. So that means this guy. Yeah, let's get these two together. We don't run into problems with that because this guy then is going to go in like that yeah correct all right so let's get this guy in here make sure that this guy is slanting the right way before I do the gluing and it's exactly like this so that's how it's gonna go question is do I want to do it this thing scares me because on version one there was a section that I didn't put the right orientation and it definitely threw off the build and I don't want that to happen again so I'm going to make triple check that everything is fine it's got to go like this everything aligns nicely so I don't have to go filling any gaps later and we're good this is exactly how it goes are going to go in this one. Come on. There we go. Go 
luck, man. Good luck on your approach. a little scared there. I just didn't want to go in. Cuando lo hablamos? Yeah, we're going to fly this um, as soon as it's done. <laughs> we're definitely going to fly this as soon as it's done. Um, I still got some pieces to go, um, especially to print, but we're going to get this done pretty soon. Question is, should I put that together or not yet? Yeah, we'll wait for this one. Alright, here's a scary one. Oh, I should have cut these holes first. I forgot, but we're gonna cut them anyways. this one now the problem with this one is that it's a very tricky piece because there is no guides on it um, so you need to make sure that it's actually in the correct position this is fuselage number three it is very tricky so to make sure it's the right one you just lay it on top and make sure it aligns Make sure it aligns without having to push anything anywhere. That's very important. Because last time I did that, they were not aligning. And I had to go through hoops to try to get them to align perfectly. Now this is the top. But it also needs a bit of holes. Trying to make them just a tiny bit bigger. It's a lot easier for this operation. So 
So Fernando, guys, um, he's a friend of mine. He was actually at the flight of the first one. So, yeah, we're definitely going to fly this one together again. Um, I think in about two weeks, probably. Um, hopefully, I have more time to finish this faster. So make sure, guys, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the maiden flight. Yeah, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the maiden flight. As soon as we fly, I will get that video done and I'll be posting it. Here we go. You'll be there to record? Yeah, this time. Um, I hope you bring your I hope you bring your uh, your drone this time. Um, <laughs> little story, guys. Uh, he shows up. I asked everybody that was gonna help out a very long time ago to help out if they could help out. Um, I asked him and Paulo to bring their drones so they can get aerial footage, and he brought the batteries. He brought everything in his backpack, but he forgot the drone. So hopefully this time, you will have the drone. But hey, it's a thought that counts, that you wanted to help out, and I appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it. I appreciate that you're here building this with me, too. All right, let's try to fit these guys. All right, one more. Now I'm getting stuck onto this. Come on, all the others aligned. Let's go. There we go. Hold it for a little bit, let the glue dry. pressure all the way come on there we go now so in this fuselage's third part number three uh, is actually where the lid is gonna be here is the lid from the old one um, so it's literally this piece right here. So later we're gonna have to cut it and then make the lid with the magnets and everything else. All right. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this. This is part one. We have uh, three pieces of our fuselage ready. Well, let me show you guys. And there we go, one, two, three. Um, again, this is a, about a nine foot long uh, fuselage. Uh, we have our first three pieces together. Uh, this is actually gonna stay about this three pieces all the way to the end, uh, but I'll be showing you that. The next part is gonna be inserting the carbon fiber rods for the wings and putting everything together. Um, I hope you guys like this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like this idea of the stream like this. I really enjoy it and I wanna build this with you guys. Uh, let me know if you liked it let me give it a thumbs up make sure you share this and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss the maiden flight of my version 2 is going to be spirit airways um, it's going to be fun and i guarantee that something bad may happen <laughs> uh, hopefully it doesn't but because i really want to fly it a couple times uh, but we'll see i guess we're gonna have to wait and see so again, guys, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know in the comments so we keep this series going. Um, in the future, I do hope I will build a lot more plans with you guys. And I enjoy this. I enjoy this showing you the whole build process. So if you enjoyed it, let me know and I will keep doing this. 
So guys, again, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go watch all the other videos. And I will see you next time, guys.